Hey guys, Ivan here, and in today's video we get a couple of very interesting bodybuilding updates. The first one is Hunter Labrada with a couple of uh, photos and some uh, video as well of him posing, showing us his back too. But when I saw these photos, like from the front and from the side, I mean, I was immediately like, wow, what the hell did even happen here? Like, I did not expect Hunter to be actually this good this year. Now, in the offseason, it seemed like he made some progress. But then, when his prep started, it seemed like he was gonna be the same, like he always is. However, it turns out it's not gonna be the case. At three weeks or less than three weeks out of Italy Pro, he is looking most certainly better than ever, honestly. And this is looking actually quite aesthetic as well. Now, those freaking legs, legs are freaking impressive. I mean, the adductors are literally connected at the knee area. Like, how crazy is that? And it's not like he's adductor dominant, like his lateralis, his outer head is also quite sweepy. And nothing is like uh, overdeveloped or underdeveloped, like, legs are very complete from the front. And he has calves, massive calves as well. So lower body is looking really thick, really impressive. But then the upper body also looks very good, like the conditioning right now at 3 weeks out is phenomenal. And as you can see, his weight is 262 in the morning, and that's after 5 hard push days. So that's like him depleted completely, and he's 262 with basically almost stage ready conditioning. You're gonna see why I don't think he's quite there yet, but he's very very close. Now, he's heavy, so 262, he's lean at that weight as well. When he carbs up, when he fills out a little bit more, he's gonna be probably heavier, like close to 270. I mean, that's, that's massive, that's a lot, that's basically Nick Walker size. And the biggest problem I had with Hunter's physique was his midsection lately. That lower belly area was kind of popping out, you know, for some reason. And I thought it could be fixed with posing, and it seems like, at least in these photos, it looks better. It looks like he, I guess, learned how to keep that part of his midsection tight. It's not like he has a waist that is big, it's not big at all, it's a small waist. And the abs are, they're not super deep, not like, I don't know, Andrew Jack, they're, they're, but they're not super shallow as well. They're fine. You know, it's all about just keeping the lower belly area tight, you know, contracted, and he's doing that, at least in this pose, hopefully that's gonna be the case on the stage, in all the poses, now his chest, you can argue that the chest could be bigger, he, he did tore that one pack a long time ago, but, you know, it's looking grainy, it's looking separated, it's looking like pretty, pretty nice and full, uh, shoulders are massive, arms are big, so, like, what is a weak point here, from the front, find one, what is not super impressive, I don't think there is anything, I mean, yeah, like, he doesn't have a freak factor, nothing is, like, super freaky, maybe his legs with those freaking adductors, and, like, with calves as well, but, like, nothing really stands out, he's very, very balanced, and also kind of aesthetic as well, like, pretty nice shape, you know, his father is Lila Brada, and he was really super aesthetic, so he has genetics, those kind of genetics, and he is getting conditioned, he's gonna be ripped on the stage, so this is shaping up to be the best Hunter Labrada ever, and I'm wondering how far can this Hunter Labrada reach? Take a look at him from the side now, so side tricep, one of his best poses, I gotta say, somehow he's able to open up to show the width of his shoulders and also make his tricep pop out. This is definitely not something you see very often, like, when bodybuilders turn to the side, their triceps can, like, pop out, but then they lose the weight in the shoulders, but if they tilt to the front, they lose some of the tricep, like, you can see the whole tricep, because tricep is basically visible from the side and from the back, but Hunter is kind of managing to do both, and it looks crazy impressive. So, like, the arms are massive, triceps are massive, the hamstrings are also big from the side, and the main thing about this pose, like, is his belly contracted, is it tight? Yeah, he's doing that now as well. Maybe when he lost some weight, he's more efficient at doing that, but... And he's also depleted here. But again, he is crazy complete. Look at the abs and thighs. Now, here, he's contracting that lower belly properly. And he's showing, like, all the crazy details in the abs and the legs are looking freaky. Honestly, I am really impressed with Hunter Labrada right now. I did not expect him to look this good. 
And so to answer my own question, how far he can reach, where he can place at a Mr. Olympia, I have no doubt at this point that he's gonna be top 6. I can definitely see him beating Brandon Curry this year finally. But can he beat Nick Walker? I mean, that's a really good question, that's a really interesting comparison. Now, before I answer that, can he beat Nick Walker? Let's check out his back, that's the one thing we haven't seen. So based on his glutes right here, yeah, there is a little bit more work to be done, but the back looks grainy, and it looks improved as well. It definitely looks wider. I don't know how much lats he added, but the terrace muscle looks bigger, so he looks definitely a lot wider. And he's looking like super grainy, like super hard in the back as well. And again, he has a little bit more body fat or whatever to lose from the glutes. So once he does that, everything else is going to be more detailed, more shredded. So imagine his back once he's completely dialed in and then dehydrated and peaked for the show. This is going to be a really good Hunter Labrada. He is extremely complete at this point. And with his aesthetics and like lack of... Uh, any weak points, like uh, Nick Walker has some weak points, Hunter right now, not really, I really don't know what is a weak point to Hunter Lebrad, honestly, like everything is there, so if he comes in, shredded, and this big, this heavy, with this complete of a physique, look at the tricep, how much it's popping, and then look at the shoulder width, <laughs> like it, it is insane what he's doing in the side tricep, and that's also a good pose for Nick Walker, I don't know, that's gonna be a good battle. Nick Walker versus Hunter Labrada, that's gonna be... I think that's gonna be a fight for that uh, fifth spot. I mean, I can expect anything from Nick Walker as far as where he's gonna place. Like, anything within that uh, top six, but uh, can the same be said about Hunter Labrada? Maybe he surprises us all and places higher than we expect. I mean, he is looking crazy right now. And I feel like he's gonna battle against uh, Nick Walker most likely. I think that's where he's at right now. He's bringing his best ever, I'm pretty sure about that. Tell me what you guys think about that uh, in the comment section down below. Now, there is a potential for him to place higher, but like, as high as to win the Mr. Olympia? No, no, no I don't see him doing that, especially now with uh, freaking Hadi Chopin, Derek Lansford, Samson Dara, Andrew Jack, all of those guys are freaking monsters. And take a look at Hadi Chopin right now, like how crazy this is. At uh, seven weeks out of the show, he is looking... He, he is in really good condition, like, he is already very hard, but he is massive. Like, look at the freaking size of this guy, the fullness, the, the, the width, the roundness, the, the volume of the muscle. Like, everything is freaking massive and already in a very good condition. I mean, this is not even close to stage condition for hardy standards, not even close. He's gonna look rock hard for that stage, I'm sure he's gonna be super shredded, super dry, but even at this point, his conditioning is amazing, and his size is crazy as well, like, he's really massive, really full and round, and you saw Derek Lansford, you kinda know what Derek is bringing, and he's also improved, but is Derek this impressive? Is he really at this level? I don't feel like it, I feel like Hardy is crazy crazy right now, I mean, he has weak points as well, like, his shoulders are a little sus, a little bit more than a little, arms, I would say, as well, and, like, uh, one leg is smaller than the other, and, you know, he's not exactly the most uh, aesthetic, the perfect uh, bodybuilder, there are flaws, for sure, but Derek has flaws as well, but if you're talking the sheer freak factor, you know, conditioning combined with fullness, size, basically everything, overall, overall bodybuilding criteria, I feel like Hadi is better, I feel like right now Hadi is, it's gonna be really hard for anybody to beat him, he is looking like a freaking monster right now. Now if we go further down in placements, so where will this guy, Rafael Brandau, place? I mean, there hasn't really been a lot of talk about him since the Arnold Classic, where he looked absolutely impressive, and here's what he looks like right now, so he's definitely not in shape yet, but he will be in shape. His coach is uh, Neil Hill, and they talked about what he was doing in that Arnold Classic prep. Like, he was eating a ton of food to get to get that shredded, so he has no issue getting lean. He's gonna probably do it, uh, like, at the very end of the prep. He doesn't need to do it any sooner. But Rafael Brandau is a really impressive bodybuilder, and you guys know that Tyler Mannion was truly impressed by him after the Arnold Classic. He basically said that Rafael has no weak poses, which is something you see... 
very rarely. Like, all of his poses are good, at least. And he posted this photo, it's an older photo from his Arnold Classic prep, but I don't think it was, um, it was posted before. And in this one, in, a, in this hat spread, look at him, look at how freaking amazing he looks. I would say definitely the most aesthetic bodybuilder of them all today. I would say more aesthetic than Andrew Jack even, but not as big, definitely not as big. Though those aesthetics are definitely gonna help him. How much will they help him? Is he gonna be top 10? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's top 10. We all know who's gonna be top 6, uh, let's say Brandon Curry, 7th, and then we're left with uh, Martin Fitzwater, in my opinion, 8th, and then I would say Bekrus Tabani, if he gets there, and Rafael Brandau, I think, will round up the top 10. That's just my opinion, I could be wrong, but I feel like he, he's definitely a top 10 guy. What about Tony Burton? I mean, this guy was the topic last year quite a lot, but... You know, even though he placed 8 the Mr. Olympia, nobody's having him in their top 10 this year. Is that because he got worse or anything like that? No, no, it's simply because last year the lineup was weaker. There was no Nick Walker, there was no Martin Fitzwater, there was no Rafael Brandau. A lot of new guys are coming and they're probably gonna push Tonio out of that top 10. I mean, Martin Fitzwater already beat Tonio, uh, Rafael Brandau beat him as well. So, like, he's probably gonna be right there at the cusp of top 10, like, probably maybe around 11th, 12th, I don't know, we'll see. Or maybe he surprises us and, like, beats uh, Rafael Brandau, for example, but if that didn't happen at the Iron Classic Brazil when Rafael was completely off and uh, Tonio was at his best, it's not gonna happen at the Mr. Olympia either. So, I don't think Tonio is gonna be top 10, but I'm pretty sure this guy will be. Anyways, whatever you guys think about Rafael placing at a Mr. Olympia, or about Harry Chopin winning, or about Hunter, where he can place, and will he beat Nick Walker, whatever your opinion is, tell me down below in the comment section. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. For more content like this, guys, please stay tuned, subscribe to this channel. Thank you guys so much for watching, see you soon, all the best, and bye-bye.